Hey, David, how are you doing? Doing good. I want to. I want to read through your bookshelf, though. That looks very fun. Oh wow! Yes, but it, it it takes time, so we have to do that next time. <laughs> <laughs> David, thank you so much for your time today. Seriously, pleasure talking to you. First of all, what's more challenging, you know, doing a sequel to a legendary movie that came out over forty years ago, or doing a sequel to a sequel of that movie? Oh, interesting. Uh, I I feel like our our twenty eighteen installment w- was was more intimidating for me because we had a lot of work to do to invite a very passionate fan base to return to the franchise. Um, some of whom have been there all along and some of whom have departed uh, along the way. And, uh, and I wanted everyone to be able to enjoy a new, a new Michael Myers, Laurie Strode story. So we had that agenda. And then we also had the agenda of inviting people that had never heard of Halloween before and didn't know who Michael and Laurie were and, and bring them into a franchise so that we could introduce them to a mythology that we're very, uh, very passionate about. So, that was fun, uh, but very challenging to appeal to multiple groups of people. And then I feel like once we got the trust and we found the success of that film, uh, at least for me personally, I felt liberated in a way where we could expand the community of Haddonfield. We could tackle more uh, ambitious themes and, and set pieces. And for me, we just turned up the rock and roll a little bit. Right. So you felt much less pressure this time. Much less pressure. And then the other thing about it as a middle chapter is that we didn't have the pressure of the resolve of the completion of the satisfying closure of the story. So we literally just got to open up the closet and pull out all the toys and start smashing things and make a big mess. And then we get to clean it up in the third chapter. Right, exactly. And you were very, like, very, very young when the very first Halloween movie came out in the 70s. Um, and we all, you know, the ones that the people that love horror films, they usually get in touch very early on in their lives with horror. And I was wondering how important has it been for you as a filmmaker and storyteller to get in touch very early on, you know, in order to develop uh, the relationship with this genre that you have today? Well, for me, it was always, <clears throat> horror films were always an important part of my diet. My parents were very strict. And I think part of what, the allure of horror was, was that I was not allowed to see it. And so, and I, I loved movies, every, every kind of movie I loved. And so, but that was the type that my parents were saying, no way. So uh, that just meant I wanted to see them more. And so I had to find new and inventive ways to expose myself to movies and, and see them, whether, you know, be, uh, I, I remember when Hellraiser came out for the first time and, and I was just like so interested in that poster and Pinhead and what, what, what's a Cenobite? Um, so there's so much fun that I, I had discovering the taboo of, of horror and then, and then tracing the, uh, the history of horror has just been a really fun, fun road for me as a, as, a, as a film lover and now a filmmaker. You know, I can tell you it's been really, really hard for me as well to convince my parents to allow me to show me certain films, you know, so I always had to try to find other ways going to my brother and my sister, you know, and trying and hoping that they will show me the stuff that I want to see. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, what really surprised me in this movie was actually the character of Cameron. You know, when I, when I saw the first movie, it was like, come on, Michael, he's right there. Just, just get this guy, you know? And this time you turned him into a character that we don't want to die, you know? And I was wondering what inspired this char- character development between the movies? Well, well one is I, I love uh, the actor Dylan, who I really enjoy working with. And I remember watching the first film and thinking, oh, crap, we turned a really nice guy into kind of a prick. So... It was a little bit of, a, of an effort to redeem his character, but then it was also, he wasn't so, so redeemed that we, we couldn't, um, couldn't have our way with him at some point. So it was, it was, uh, it was fun to be able to, to I'm trying not to spoil movies, uh, the movie, but, um, but it is, um, it, it's fun to take a character that you think one thing of and then show another side and show, show those redemptions just as much as, as the movie's about good and evil and Michael versus Laurie, there's also a blurry line with so many people in the community that have great intentions, but are they good? Are they evil? Are they misguided? Are they misinformed? And these are themes that I think I find fascinating is because nobody is, is so pure or so dark. Everybody has the, 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 the many faces. So I, I like a, a, using a movie like this, a, a monster movie to explore those faces. Absolutely. That was really fascinating because when I first saw him in the sequel, I was like, oh, okay, he's back. But then, but then I was, you know, moments later, it was like, come on, you can do it, you know? So that's really, I love that, you know, because it's very unexpected. Right. 
So what's also very nostalgic in the film is the fact that you actually show us, you know, Haddonfield in the 70s again. Um, and you show us Haddonfield from the present. I was wondering how tricky is it to show us, you know, two versions of Haddonfield and making us believe that this version is from the 70s and this one from the present? Well, it's, it's, it's not tricky to come up with the ideas and to write it, but it is tricky to rebuild it in our art department and the production design team and uh, the, the meticulous detail, the recreation of the Myers house and so many of the, the set pieces that we're trying to emulate that look. And then, and then you hand it off to the camera department and you're trying to emulate the, the lighting, uh, the, the color of light and the um, style of, of shooting, the camera movement even. Uh, so our production or our, our director of photography reached out to Dean Cundy, who shot the original film and discussed some of his approach and how they did it, uh, gave us a few rules and limitations. And, and, and so that it would have a very different feel if you look at it side by side with the, uh, the techniques and atmosphere of our 2018 film. And, you know, I just remembered what Jason Blum said a few days ago. You know, he said that. Uh, everyone believes that you guys are going to fail with, you know, the, the, the Exorcist trilogy that, that you're about to make. And I was wondering if this is actually something that people told you as well about Halloween when you took it over. Oh, yeah, you bet. You bet. There's a lot of pressure and, and people have seen the success and failure of, of that property, of, of both of these properties. And so it's very, it's a, it's a, it's a bold assumption that you can do the, the legacy justice and that you can try to capture the magic that the original films uh, captured and, and the, take the journey that they took us on. And so it, it is, it's ambitious. Uh, I'm intimidated, but I'm also really excited about those challenges. Absolutely. And what, you know, whenever somebody tells you, um, oh, don't do that, it's, it's too risky, you're gonna, you're gonna ruin it or whatever, you know, because a lot of people or filmmakers will probably say, you know what, I prefer not to do it, you know, I don't want to ruin it. But whenever people tell you, don't do that, how do you find the confidence to tell them, nope, I'll be the one that succeeds? That's a great question. And sometimes you don't know. Uh, but I do feel like if you take these titles, someone's going to do it. And so I'm, and, and, I, and being a big fan of these movies, I'm protective of those movies. So I feel like if it's going to be someone, I'd like it to be me so I can, I can try to, um, manage it and manage how it's uh, how it's created and, and how respectful it's being to the original and and where we're using fan service to just pay homage to where the roots of the franchises began and when we're trying to innovate and put our own signature in it because nobody wants to see the same movie done twice absolutely yes exactly uh, and i just mentioned you know the exorcist and uh, we heard that it's going to be a trilogy what inspired you guys to say it's not going to be just one film but three um, what inspired just a, a lot of ideas, too many for one movie. And, and I also feel like the appetite of, of the viewer now with so many series that are ongoing and, and, and things like that, that, that a, a one-off is almost for, for a lot of people, a lot of my friends and a lot of fans of these franchises. It's like, if you can get it started, let's keep it going and let's, let's tell a complete epic tale. And so we've got some ideas to, to inject new characters and new situations into into both of these franchises and why not give it a shot right and are you like planning to uh kind of collaborate you know with william Friedkin and, and linda blair you know just like the way you did with john carpenter and jamie lee for for halloween at, at this point right now i'm um ellen burston is is our is is along for the ride and and very much a collaborator on what we're doing with her character and uh, it's it's really fun communicating with her. She sent she sent me the other day. She sent a love seat for, that she kept in her living room from the original film, and so we're going to use oh, that in, in the movie. And so we have we have it's just amazing to be able to 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 get in the room in the creative conversations with these legacy characters of of movies, and and whether it's Jamie Lee Curtis and Kyle Richards or or Ellen Burstyn, like it's it literally is a a childhood dream of of these nightmarish movies. Absolutely. And I can't wait to see what you guys are doing with this property. 